Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at an application that is designed to serve up your media, and that's called Plex. Now I've had questions from people asking what's the best way to work with your media. And I know a lot of people have looked at OS X Server and said, can Server uh, serve up my media? And the answer to that is sort of. I mean, Server can make your files and folders available to you so that you can access them remotely. Uh, but it doesn't serve it up in any kind of interface like iTunes or anything like that. Well, that's where Plex comes in. Plex is a media server, and it's designed to take all of your media that you've got, your movies, uh, your TV shows, even your photos and such, and put them together into a nice interface that not only just displays your media, but it also pulls down all of the metadata, including you know um, the covers and the uh, synopsises of the different uh, media that you've got and their names and all that, all that sort of thing. It really does a good job of pulling down rich metadata uh, and then displaying it for you. And it does so on a wide variety of devices. What makes Plex so unique is that it doesn't matter what device you've got, you can access your media from any one of those types of devices. If you look down here, you can see it's available on iOS, Android, Windows Phone, Roku, Apple TV. I mean, all of these things, even on your um, different game consoles and Amazon Fire TV. The other thing is, is it's available on television sets itself in many ways, too, that uh, on some of the television sets with their apps, it's built in there to download. And so Plex is uh, one of those great applications that just makes it so easy to access your media from anywhere, uh, iPads, iPhones, the whole thing that uh, this is one of those great apps I had to cover again. Uh, now I've covered this in the past, um, but they've made so many different changes to it. I wanted to do a more in-depth look at Plex and help you learn how to set it up. Now let me just show you uh, some of the different features of Plex, just so you can see what it looks like. And so Plex runs a server uh, on your Mac, and so you want a Mac that's going to be on all the time, like we've been talking about with OS X Server. And that way it then can access that media and give it to you and show it to you wherever you're at. Uh, if you just scroll down here, you can see the different um, options you've got available. Uh, Plex will work with movies, television shows, work with your music, work with your photos, uh, videos like, you know, maybe um, family videos and such. Uh, and there's also a premium option that I'm going to talk about uh, later, and I'll show you what you get with that. But as you can see here, it does a nice job of organizing your, uh, your see here it's for movies on all of these different devices and gives you access to them. Uh, allows you to share them. I mean, there's all kinds of different things that you can do. So we're going to go into those details. Uh, the nice thing about Plex is that it is free. Uh, yes, it is an actual free server application. Uh, but the hopes is, is that you'll enjoy it so much that you'll go for the premium option and uh, get some of those other features uh, as well. So before we get into talking about uh, the setup and how all the pieces work, one of the things I thought I'd do is show you how to prepare your media for Plex because it's important that you have that uh, prepared. So if I just come over here, I pulled up this website here. It's the support website for Plex. You can see it right here with all the information. And basically what this does is shows you how to name your various media files. Because what Plex is going to do is it's going to uh, go to the web to pull down information based on the names of the file that it gets. And then that's how it's going to do its matching. So you can see here there's ways to name your movie media files. You know, if I click on this, it's going to show, uh, let's say, naming actual movie files. And it shows you how the folder structure looks and it shows you a little bit of the best way it likes to have it named. It likes to have uh, standalone videos with the name of the movie with the year and that's important especially if you've got uh, for instance if it's Batman what year was this Batman movie out and it helps it match it a little bit more easily. Uh, you can see here you can do it with uh, different movie folders and subfolders and such so um, it kinda shows you how to name movie files. If we come back uh, one of the more important ones is how do you name TV shows. And you can see here uh, naming TV shows based on the season and the episode. And that makes it easier. You can see they've got a folder for TV shows. Then you've got Grey's Anatomy, then Season 1. And then within that, you've got Season 1, Episode 1, Season 1, Episode 2, Season 1, Episode 3, and so on. And so it likes this naming convention, and it really will accurately 
uh, find the metadata for your television shows if you name it this way. Uh, you can even see for multi-episode versions, it shows you how to do that as well. Uh, again, that's just for best experience. Uh, in my experience, Plex has done a pretty good job of finding the metadata for most of my stuff, uh, even if I haven't named it uh, perfectly. Uh, let me just put this down for a second. Let me just pull up a finder window here. Let me just show you uh, my, my uh, setup here. Uh, what I've done just for this video is I've got a Movies Plex folder. And if I just click on that, you'll notice inside this folder, I've got a whole bunch of different movie uh, material here. You can see I've got uh, Harry Potter with the name here, and these are MKV files. I've got some MP M4V files as well. So I've got kind of this mix of different media in here. And the great part about Plex is that it will take that media and it will match it and it will find the metadata for it, and then it will also play it through its player for you. Uh, you don't have to have a specific video format necessarily for that to work. You can have AVIs or MOV files and that sort of thing as well. So you can see how I've got this named in here. I've got some with the dates and some not. And I'm going to leave this alone. But like I said, the best way to set up uh, your movie uh, naming conventions would be like this. Back to the Future with the parenthesis 1985. So that may be how you want to set that up. Now, television shows are another way to do it, and so here I've got different television shows. Uh, let's go to King of Queens here. You can see I've got the folder structure with King of Queens. I've got Season 1, and then as you can see here, I've got King of Queens with the dash, Season 1, Episode 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way down for Season 1. You can see all the different episodes there. That's the naming convention that Plex likes the most, and as I'll show you when we set it up, you'll see how it uh, lays that information out in a way that you can uh, have it displayed and really access it easily. All right, just wanted to show you that. Let's go ahead and go back to the website here, and let's go back to the main website. So once you've got your media named and set up, then we just need to uh, get ready to install Plex. And so what we can do is just click this Get Plex for Free button. It's going to take us to this download page where you actually create an account. And so you'll create a username and a password and all of that. It's a free account. You don't need a credit card or anything like that. But once you create this account, uh, then it lets you sign in. Now I happen to have an account, so I'm just going to click on this Sign In here. It's going to take me to the sign-in page, and I can put in my credentials there. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, once you have your sign-in information in there, you just click on sign-in. And it's going to go ahead and log me into Plex. And there we go. So you can see I'm logged into Plex now up here, and everything's ready to go. And so now what I need to do is just download the Plex server application. Now you notice I've got this launch button up here because I can launch into Plex right here in the web interface, but I do want to start my server so that I can get access to my data. And you can see, you basically sign up and download the application, you add your media, and then you get apps and stream to any device. Okay, so we're going to say download. It's going to take me over here, and it allows me to uh, select what platform I want to download for. And as you can see, you can also install Plex on, an, on a network attached storage device as well, like a Synology or a Drobo. Again, these are, all, these are this isn't a regular Drobo that's attached in any other way than with a network uh, attached by Ethernet to your router. Okay, that's what all of these different uh, storage devices have. And they all have software on them, so it allows you to run Plex. Okay, in my case, I'm running it on my Mac, so I'm gonna leave it there, that's the right platform. And we're just gonna say download. And so now it's gonna go ahead and download uh, my copy of Plex there so that I can use it on my Mac. And so we'll wait for that to download. Okay, now that that is downloaded, we just go up here and there's our Plex Media Server. Now we're gonna go ahead and show this in the Finder so we can access it. And what we wanna do is put this in our Applications folder. So we're gonna say Show and drag this over to Applications. Go into the Applications folder, go down to the Plex Media Server, and we're just going to go ahead and double-click on it to launch it. And I'm just going to pop this down. And so what's going to happen is Plex is going to be verified here. It's going to say it's from a website. Do I want to open it? I'll say go ahead and open. And what's going to happen is it starts the application up here in my toolbar. And you can see this little chevron right here. And if I just click on that, this is the Plex Media Server. And you can see it's... Uh, got these various options here. You've got preferences. You can choose to open at login, uh, which is something that I would recommend doing. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. You can see now I've got a little check mark next to it, so it'll open at login. I can update my library, which I'll show you what that looks like, check for updates and all of that. So let's go ahead and open Plex for the first time. 
And you'll notice that Plex is a web-based uh, player, and so it's going to load here for me. And this is the basic Plex interface. And so you can see we've got all these different options here. Nice thing that it is a web interface allows me to launch it right here in the website. And you can see here I need I can sign in, and so it's important that I sign in from here. So we go to the sign in page and I can put my username and password in there. Let me do that again. Okay, once I have that in there, I just click on sign in and there we go. So now I'm logged into the Plex interface. You can see it's got my name and information up here. Uh, they've had uh, an overhaul, so you can, uh, they added quick search and a dashboard makeover, it says. So it gives me these little updates. I'm going to click that off. And you can see here when I click on this, I've got my account, I've got some announcements over here on some new stuff, and all of that. So that gives you an idea of how to get started with Plex and how to get it uh, set up, prepare your media, and then launch it. Uh, in the next screencast, I'm going to show you how to get all of your libraries and things into Plex to get it started and up and running. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.